So I have the privilege of introducing Joe Rush. Joe has been challenged by anxiety and depression for almost nine years. And during this time, this illness has at times taken hold of him, testing his faith, social connections, impacting upon his capacity to work and engage with family and friends. But rather than allow this illness to overrun him, Joe has decided on his own game changer. Pardon the pun, Joe. In 2018, Joe met the challenge of his illness head on by taking the courageous step by raising awareness about the range of issues confronting young people who live with depression daily. This courageous step has become a metaphor for Joe and it's an important foundation as he moves forward in his life, hence his journey, progression against depression. With a focus on raising awareness and in the true Ignatian tradition of being a man for others, Joe set about partnering with Beyond Blue to walk from Melbourne to Canberra, accompanied by his faithful four-legged companion, Jonty. And there's a chance we might see Jonty tonight. Joe had an initial goal to raise funds of $20,000 for Beyond Blue. What Joe finally raised will be revealed to you shortly. Through the benefits of social media, with the Walking It Off website, word, word soon spread about Joe's journey, both his personal life journey and his trek to Canberra. The online response and the reaction was phenomenal, as Joe's journey struck a chord for many. Joe's ultimate goal is to conquer the illness that is depression, but like any conquest, this requires a plan, a robust approach, and the support, encouragement, and understanding of those around him in order to achieve the plan. Tonight, Joe's goal is to share his story with you with the hope that it raises awareness for people directly affected by depression and for those who are important people in the lives of others who struggle with this illness. His message tonight is aimed at young people who may not be feeling their normal selves, that it's important to speak up. It's a message for friends to feel comfortable to check in with their mates about their wellbeing, and it's a message for parents and siblings to be patient and understanding when one of their own is struggling. Please welcome Joe Rush. July 2009, a fortnight after my 21st birthday and a stage in my life when I didn't have a great deal of direction, enthusiasm or goals in mind. I was parting hard like most fellas that age, but not respecting what was bubbling away deep down inside of me. I was enjoying the highs adolescence was bringing, but my lows were gathering steep momentum and was starting to impact the way I perceived how life was meant to be lived. It was at this time It was at this time I logged onto the Beyond Blue website to investigate the symptoms for the foreign sickness of mental illness. My self-diagnosis was that I had similarities to bipolar. The swings and roundabouts I was experiencing seemed to fit the bill. As I dusted myself off and got my mind back on track, Following those thoughts, I had in my own mind or a distant memory, and not something I would address properly for another handful of years. Fast forward 104 months, as Jonty and I broke through the walking it off finish line banner at the steps of Parliament House in Canberra. For one of the first times in my existence, I felt the sensation that I completed a goal I had set out, fronted up to the demons both physically and mentally and conquering them. Something I could smile at and feel pleased with my efforts. I lay on the sun-soaked tiles with an overriding feeling of belief, uh, sorry, relief. Relief that I didn't let anyone down and did some good for many others. I've been used to letting people down and consistent, consistently letting myself down. This wasn't just the finale of an eight-month venture, but a blockade in the ground dating back to that sad and lonely time in July 2009. Today, or tonight, I will discuss experiences and thoughts during those times to hopefully give you a better understanding of mental illness. If you can take something worthwhile for yourself, 
a technique to assist others, or just a better, a better perception, I've done my job. The period leading up to being diagnosed with depression and anxiety was unbearable. I had a sharp decline in self-worth, uncontrollable emotional fragility, and a want to remain, remain bedridden as long as possible. Discussing my history and current state of mind with my GP, the mental health shadow I feared was hanging over me was confirmed. The words coming out of the doctor's mouth was like daggers to my heart as I wasn't prepared to carry it round with me, regardless of its simmering for many years. It felt like a sticker had been slapped on my head saying insane or weak. Being put on medication was daunting but a must and gaining support from family and friends was difficult as mental health was extremely foreign to all. My guard was standing tall and my erratic behaviour was clear as day. I still had the mantra of being the tough and physical full forward who would break down walls whenever required. Ultimately, that ship had well and truly sailed. Out of no fault of anyone's, I felt more alone and isolated than before. My mind had taken over and I was unable to regain control. During some of the darkest times, I tended to go one way or another. I would completely shut off from the world, turn the phone off, close the bedroom door and venture down the giving up zone. The other would be to self-harm. Self-harm being excessive drinking, gambling or anything with a high risk, with the knowledge I would get in such a state of despair, I would be capable of anything. Self-sabotage is a regular link under the mental health banner. Thinking so little of yourself is common, so it's vitally important to be aware of these triggers yourself and for loved ones. The need to help myself wasn't evident. The want to deepen my hurt was. Lies creep in, social expelment ringing true. It was a real life horror. A fork in the road moment was being admitted to the psychiatric ward at the Alfred Hospital early last year. After changing medication, living in a house of strangers and in a state of steep worry, I had a terrible night's sleep and felt my current situation became all too much. I jumped on the train and wanted to land somewhere I couldn't be found. What would happen next, I did not know. I sat on the beach at Chelsea, contemplating my place on earth. Why would I stay when such an overwhelming feeling of sadness is was a constant in my mind? After revealing my location to my little sister later in the day, I was taken to hospital to try and get some constant help and somewhere to be kept safe. It was a time of urgent reflection and to share experiences with fellow mental health strugglers. No one wants to go to hospital. Uh, sorry. No one wants to go to hospital, even if you're sick or injured. But at times, it's required to fix the necessary problem you have. Same goes for mental illness. The mantra behind being admitted to hospital isn't what you see on movies or can imagine. It's a place of peace and support to help you regain a form of confidence and self-worth. In hindsight, it was a catalyst for the formation of walking it off. Whilst enduring a frustrating period following, I was absolutely hating what I was. Relationships breaking down through my own selfishness was a painful reality. So my own hate and disregard for myself was now spreading to others. I needed a shift. I needed something to work towards. I needed a goal. I simply wasn't going to get by living the mystery in which each day would bring. My theory behind setting a task like walking to Canberra was simple. I was staying relevant to what my mind sorry, I was staying relevant to what was warping my mind and, and talking and posting about it. I would be able to help others. In my mind I could turn the wheel in a positive light. In theory, it was terrific. In reality, I thought impossible. After a bit of repetitive arm twisting um, of mum's arm, I was given the green light to get a dog. Adding some spice and responsibility to my life was just what the doctor ordered. Maddie, my little sister, got to work, being my canine specialist, and plucked out a little border collie kelpie in the outskirts of Whittlesea. We went to meet and greet the little the litter of pups, and to try to pick out the golden boy. The pink-nosed, cat-chasing little rascal we left with was quickly named Jonty. From that day, he's never far from my side. The duties of pooch fatherhood were at times tedious, 
dragging me out of bed when I absolutely did not want to, cleaning up all the funny business, pulling anything and everything apart was annoying, but bloody brilliant all the same. It was like he could sense my fragility and urge me on to be a better man. We have a bond that's bomb-proof, an understanding yet cheeky side. If he knew he had an 800k venture around the corner, I don't know if he would have been as jubilant. As the months ticked by and the walking, walking it off progression against depression motto was gaining momentum, my health certainly took a pleasant turn. It was, I was thoroughly focused on encouraging donation, seeking sponsors, spreading the word that it's okay to not be okay. And of course, training for the lengthy stroll. Putting myself in front of a camera in a positive and at times a distress banner was an important part of my week. It kept me in check and through mountains of positive feedback, this kept the train on the tracks with the view to kicking off in February 2018. Roll on Feb 16 and the day had arrived. A journey that was pivotal to getting into a frame of mind that has me up here on stage today. Taking off from the MCG at 10 a.m. on the dot with a tribe of uh, loyal followers waving, walking, playing chariots of fiber, chariots of fire, it was all there. It was a strange feeling to finally set off, knowing I'd be on my feet the next 28 days, pooch in hand, sights to uphold, spreading the word of mental health, crossing states and territories, but ultimately convincing myself anything is possible. My goal within the goal of getting to Canberra was getting from A to B each day as planned. No excuse. It was a logistical challenge lugging a 125 kilo rig up north on foot, but that was the least of my worries. Keeping a clean, motivated and happy frame of mind would be the biggest challenge. The support received from start to end was enormous. Having troops join me for the majority of the journey shows what a support network I have established. Walkers and support along the way was next level, and the messages, comments and calls were an instant pep up every day to keep that focus. It's ironic at times of depression, you're certain you're alone and no one cares. The mind shovels you into a state of isolation when it's not the case. Open your eyes and see. Let people in. They want to, you just need to let them. Doesn't need to be mum or dad or your best mate. There are plenty of people within your own network of reliable allies who you can lean on for an in-depth support. In some sense, I felt someone was looking out for me. Physically sound as a bell from start to finish seemed astonishing, not only to me, but mates who were, who were quick to point out the size of the moving transport. The weather was something to behold. Besides a vile shower, just shy of vanilla, it was just sunshine all the way. Taking after mum, I loved being out getting some rays, and when it got hot, I enjoyed the challenge even more. Noting I hadn't packed a piece of wet weather clothing, so it was a blessing in disguise. On the whole, it was a hugely enjoyable and joyful journey. No day the same as the last, but my most successful mental method was to not look too far forward, just to focus on the day ahead and enjoy the challenges that it threw up, some physical and some mental. I had days of fatigue and tiredness, just wanting to parachute to the finish line, but also days of huge energy and enthusiasm. I would sometimes challenge the clock on myself to test my resolve and endurance. Through all of this, I was never stopping. I was on a mission. The ultimate hope is to transition these positive thoughts and determination into everyday life, as now I know it can be done. Since walking into the nation's capital on March 16th, I have battled negative thoughts, adapting back to the big, the big wide world, standing on my own two feet and making choices to set me up for the future. Whilst having these thoughts, I have a much better understanding of how, of how my mind ticks and what it takes to rise above and be better. I am progressing against depression. Whilst wanting to conquer the mental Ill the illness battle, I accept it's with me for now. I have goals I want to strive for, short and long, whilst building a desire to be a better person. There will be ups and downs, twists and turns, but ultimately, life is what you make of it. Surround yourself with people who make you feel at ease and comfortable. In life, 
we juggle negatives on a regular basis. The key theme I've come to grips with is attempting to, is attempting to convert a negative experience into a positive. I've put actions into place, but absolutely none of it would have been possible without the constant and frantic support a lot of you people in front of me tonight and abroad have provided. We are blessed with an incredibly resilient community as, and, and as we work together, as we work together as one, we can buck the trend and get ahead of the game when it comes to mental illness. To the people who supported me over the last nine years, I thank you. I haven't been an easy beast to contain and acknowledge I haven't made my life any easier. The past is done, the future is exciting, and I'm here to stay with a smile, a high five, and a hug. Thank you.